very good afternoon to everybody watching and welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve in the northern parts of the Sabi Sands. My name is Chad, on camera today we've got Mpo and we are out and about looking for some interesting things. So also just a very warm welcome to all the kids that are watching and especially to the kids from Schickler Elementary as well as Central Elm. Thanks very much for watching and please do remember that this is a live and interactive show so please do send through your questions and comments that you might have for me. So we just come to a nice little open clearing not too far from the camp and we've come across this beautiful leopard tortoise that seems like he's climbing what seems like to him Mount Everest and you might be trying to look for a little bit of shade. So the, the plan for this afternoon will be, it is quite hot. So this morning there was lots and lots of rain on Juma. So there wasn't too much that was out and about. So we're going to spend some time going to some water holes, maybe seeing if there's any elephants that might come down to drink go past the few little pan systems where there might be some wallowing rhinos, excuse me, maybe some buffalo and anything else that does come our way. It's going to be a very, very hot afternoon. There's pretty much not a cloud in the sky that I can see for now. So hopefully all the animals do come down towards the water. But why don't we just have a look at the weather throughout the all, the, all the other locations. So it does seem like this uh, leopard tortoise has decided just to rest in a little bit of shade up there on that termite mound. But I think we're going to let him rest up there and we're going to continue driving. We're going to start heading towards the closest water hole. Really, uh, hippos, they can live for about 30 to 40 years um, in the, the wild. So if a hippo is in captivity or in a zoo or something like that, they might then live a little bit longer just because they are then getting food. They don't have to fight males for different um, territories and things like that. So they can often, all animals, I mean specifically hippos now answering your question, they can live a lot longer in captivity. I mean, even something like a lion will be able to live much longer in captivity compared to the wild. I mean, a wild lion will, females will often live for about 15 years, whereas a male a little bit less, probably about 12. And then, I mean, in captivity, over 20. So quite some time. So Nadine, try again with the question. I got the name, Adrian. You asking why do the hippos walk in the water hole? So I mean, hippos they they do spend most of their days during the water hole. And they do walk in the water because they they're unable to to swim. So I mean, if a sorry, the radio is there. We go turning it down. Um, so they they do walk in the water because they're unable to swim. I mean, being quite a, a heavy animal, they do um, spend time along the bottom. And if they're in like a very big river or something like that, they'll actually be, they'll come up to the top, to the surface, and then go back down to the bottom. 
So that's one of the reasons that they will be walking in the water hole or in the water. It would be quite nice if we are able to maybe see some hippos. I know Cedric will, the other naturalist, he will be out and about shortly and I'm sure one of us will pop past a water hole that might have some hippos in for everybody to see. Dante, you wondering what hyenas eat. So hyenas, they do eat meat, so they are carnivores. And a lot of people think that hyenas will only scavenge. So that means that they will only take meals that are killed by other animals or that die naturally. But in fact, hyenas will also hunt themselves. So they'll often maybe hunt impalas or nyalas. Maybe if it's a bigger clan, they might hunt a zebra or a wildebeest. And because of that slanted back of theirs, the very long front legs and the short back legs, they are able to run for long distances. And they can often run down their prey until it gets very, very tired. And often then that prey will fall down and they are then able to eat whatever they were chasing. So a lot of the animals out here aren't able to run as long as those hyenas are. So they use that to their advantage in order to hunt something successfully. I mean, if we speak about uh, a cheetah, which is the fastest land animal, running about 120 kilometers an hour, which is probably around about 80 miles an hour, give or take, somewhere around there. That cheetah can only run for a short distance at that speed before it then has to stop because its, it's heart rate gets too high and it then does, need, then does need to just rest. There's one impala. Oh. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
saying that it's about 400 kilograms that an elephant will eat in one day. That's a big male elephant. So that's probably that's over 800 pounds if my mathematical equation is correct. Probably even 850 pounds. And also elephants they've got to constantly feed all the time because they don't have a very good digestive system. So they, they don't get all the nutrients out of whatever they are eating. So, I mean, within that 400 kilograms, they're not gonna get all the nutrients that other animals would if they had to eat that much. A lot of it just passes through their digestive system. And maybe if I do see some fresh elephant dung, it'll be quite nice to show you how you can see a lot of the fruits and leaves and bark and things like that within the dung that's suggested. And sometimes you can literally see whole fruits in the, the elephant dung. All right, well, a very good afternoon to all the kids. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got a panda. Thanks for joining us. And yes, I am coming up to our first little dam for the afternoon, and we have got some hippopotamus. There, let's go take a look at some hippopotamus here. Hello. So it looks like we've got a male, and we've got a female, and then we've got a little one that's between the two big ones. And we're going to see if we're going to get the little head coming up popping out for us very shortly but yes I am looking forward to this afternoon's drive it's gonna be wonderful the Sun is shining finally after maybe a good 24 hours of rain Skylar age 8 why do hippos spray their dung well Skylar the thing is uh, males will do that just to uh, mark a territory so when they go outside the water or even in the water as well when they uh, want to show dominance and when they want to show other hippos this is my territory this is my water hole I am going to spray my dung all over the tree or over the bush and uh, that is the way I am going to mark my area so that's exactly why they fling their dung all over yep that's why usually when we go on bushwalks many a time and if you take a, like a hippo path out of the water, like you know, towards the uh, uh, towards the the, uh, the bush felt inside of the blocks, and if you actually walk along those little hippo paths, you'll find many a time you'll find that dung's been sprayed along those pathways. Oh, well, maybe he wants to do it. No, he doesn't. Almost thought he's going to actually go and fling his dung there. But there is a little calf now and again, and you see the little one's noise nose coming up there. River age seven, no, they will not stand on their hind legs. They cannot do that at all. They will stand on all four legs. So they cannot, oh, there's a little, no, that's a, the older one. So yeah, they cannot stand on their hind legs. But they'll choose a very kind of shallow area. So where these two hippos are now, it's, a, it's like a, a very shallow spot. So it's easy so it's easy for them to stand there. So they don't want to go into too deep water because if you go in very deep water then you know you have to come up every time. If you want to sleep you have to come all the way to the surface taking a nice uh, breath of oxygen and then you have to go all the way down again and then kick yourself all the way up because remember hippos cannot float. All right so hippos cannot float. The bone density of the hippo is very heavy so it's a very thick hard heavy <coughs> heavy bone so of course what happens it's just like a, a scuba diver 
or a snorkeler. So when you go scuba diving in the sea or snorkeling and you want to go to the bottom um, of the ocean, you have to wear, of course, that weight belt. You know those weight belts? So it's got like those uh, lead weights on it uh, to make you heavier and it can sink much easier. So that's exactly why their bone density is so, so heavy and uh, for them to easily sink to the bottom. And then they can run at the bottom and then they can kick themselves up if they need to move. But they cannot stay underwater for too long. And four, five, oh, this little one. Hello. Look at it. Hey. <laughs> So that little one, I don't know how old is it now, it's about what, three, four months, Panda? Yeah. About three, four months, yeah, something like that. Of course Nadine, our director, will definitely give me the proper age of that hippo, that little baby hippo. And the people have been calling it Redders, Redders. January, sure, so Jan. Jan, Feb, March. Yeah, I'll say about three months. Let's say three months. We're going to work on three months. Two and a half, three months. Oh, so cute. And they will get up to about 35 years old. That's the age of a hippo. They can get about to 35. Dante, age seven, what do hippos eat during the daytime? I think they'll eat grass, but they'll try and go and feed at nighttime, Dante. So at nighttime, they'll move more. Uh, during the daytime, they rather kind of spend the time in the water, keep the skin nice and wet, and uh, because the skin is very sensitive to the sun, very sensitive. And on a hot day like this, they don't want to be walking around. So once that sun sets and, you know, once it uh, pretty much sets and becomes dark and cooler, then you'll find that the hippopotamus will come out of the water and then they will go into the bush, into the uh, vegetation. You couldn't have come at a better time. We've got a mother cheetah, she's running into this herd of topi, wildebeest and zebra. And who knows, maybe she's spotted a youngster that she thinks she can single out. It seems like she may have. Look at these shots. Fascinating. Well done, Manu. Who are you going after? What have you found? It's a young Topi. She's got it. Can you believe it?
Aina said, Mohammed, look at that. The lion is loud. The lion is, is, the lion is trying to fight. He's biting the hyena at the moment. This is so sad. Look at that. The, the lion is kicking the hyena. This is so sad. That hyena is badly injured. Look at that. Now the lion is coming back to uh, the, the kill which was eaten by the hyenas. Not too sure. Maybe these hyenas got this kill from the lions. I am not sure what happened here, but that was something else. The lion came running aggressively and started to attack the hyenas right by their territory. <laughs> Poo! Yay! Best ever chew toy. The lion cubs do lose their little milk teeth like other animals and it's something that we've seen more with leopard cubs than we have with lion cubs. We haven't really focused in on the, the process of their teeth and the way that they grow but it happens sort of around about, I'm guessing with lion cubs, around about six to eight months, maybe eight months would be more realistic, where they start to grow their permanent teeth and the, the little milk teeth pop out. And that is elephant dung. And elephant dung is fun. I'm bored with tails now. Elephant dung is the next thing. Wow. Yes, does that taste nice? Blah, 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 blah. Flim. of the lionesses. Welcome back everybody and apologies for the technical issues that we were experiencing but hopefully we are now back on track and we came to the water hole. It wasn't too much at the water but we've come a little bit further away from the water and we found this beautiful eagle that is just sitting on the road for now and this eagle is called a Wahlberg's eagle and it's actually feeding on little insects and little beetles and bugs that are running along the road and often you'll find after rain there'll be a lot of the smaller little critters that will be running around so like beetles and bugs and they might even be termites or we know them as flying ants and they'll be along the road and this eagle is taking advantage of those. So Jeffrey, you're wondering how hard a hyena can bite. So the hyenas, they've got the, the most amount of bite force out of all the different... Con oh, look at those beats. Sorry, I'll get back to your question now. So while I'm talking, let's just watch this uh, Wahlberg's eagle, how it is hunting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Jeffrey, you're wondering how hard a hyena can bite. So, I mean, the, the hyena does have the hardest biting force out of all the different carnivores. So, I mean, from leopard, lions, wild dogs, cheetahs, things like that, the hyena bites the hardest. And I don't know the exact amount of pressure that it does um, use when biting down but I mean a hyena is able to bite through any big bone I mean being a, a scavenger also they will often eat the the bones left over from lions killing buffaloes or wildebeest or zebras and things like that so you can only imagine how strong that jaw must be
So there's also quite a lot of uh, impalas that are running around here, uh, around where this Wahlberg's eagle is, as well as a wildebeest. You might see him come into picture now. There he's just on the right of screen in the shade. There's probably, I don't know, close on a hundred, maybe 80 impalas. Piper, so I've <clears throat> other animals won't really eat hyenas, only in extreme cases. Um, I've seen before lions eating hyenas. I've also seen leopards eat hyenas before. And I mean, if they, it's not necessary for them to, to eat them. Often if like a lion does kill a hyena, it's for competition because they're all trying to eat the same foods. So they're all trying to eat impalas and wildebeests and things like that. And if a lion does come across a hyena, what that lion will do is often kill the hyena and only sometimes will that lion then feed on the hyena, but it's not a regular thing. I've actually once before seen, I don't think the leopard killed the hyena, but the leopard was walking down the road and all of a sudden the leopard stopped and started sniffing the ground and started walking into the bush and it actually led us to the remains of a hyena carcass and the leopard actually took that carcass up into the tree and fed on it for three days. I mean it was probably about 70% of that hyena carcass that was left and the leopard just being a very opportunistic animal it took the opportunity that food was available. It didn't have to use unnecessary energy in order to then feed on that carcass. So quite a spectacular sighting that was had for those three days. <laughs> I'll see you wondering why this bird is so dark in color. So, I mean, there, there's lots of different colors to this specific bird. So it's just the different colors of the feathers. I mean, this bird is very, very dark, this Wahlberg's eagle, but there's also a light morph. There's also a white morph in those uh, different, this specific bird. So there's three different coloration variations um, for this bird. But there's no specific reason exactly why it is dark in color. But quite special that this bird hasn't flown off at all yet. I mean, if we watch it now, you can see that there's lots of, I mean, it's putting its beak down quite a lot, which means that it's feeding on all the little critters that are running around there. And it is uh, amazing that the sun has come up. Uh, I mean, the, the sun is out today. The clouds have all burnt off and it's gonna be a fantastic afternoon. I mean, already starting off with that little tortoise, the Wahlberg's eagle, some impalas and some wildebeest. And hopefully you're able to find some elephants as well as some zebra for all the kids watching today would be very, very special. And even while we're sitting here watching this Wahlberg's Eagle feed, we're listening out for any signs of elephants. So we're listening out for any breaking branches. We're listening out for any trumpeting. Even when elephants communicate with one another, you can sometimes hear the rumbles and that will then give us an indication of where the elephants might be. Because even though those elephants are the, the largest land mammal, sometimes they can be very, very difficult to find. You wouldn't think that they're hard to find, but they are pretty difficult if they want to be. It would be amazing if we could uh, have a pool party of elephants coming down to one of the water holes here on Juma. I 
And you can see there the, the impalas are also moving around this area. There's a lot of fresh grass um, in this area for these impalas to feed on. Just to the left of where they are, there's actually a small little pan. So, Graceland, there's a, a lot of different animals that will live in the water. So, I mean, terrapins, which is like a tortoise, but it lives in fresh water. They live in the water. You'll get lots of fish that will live in water. Frogs also, they, we might find some frogs on the banks of um, little water holes or mud wallows. Trish, what else lives in water? Bacteria. A bacteria, mm. algae. Um, there's so much that goes on within water. Also, you, you get eggs also mm -hmm. um, in the water. There'll be little insects that live on the water or in the water. So there's lots and lots of life in and around water. I mean, we, not, we might not all the time see it, but there is lots and lots of life. Yeah, so I think we're going to leave this Wahlberg's Eagle and these Impalas. I'm going to send you over to Cedric, who might have something at the water. Alright, so I'm here at the Baobab Dam and uh, we've got some more uh, hippos. No, I'm just joking Nadine. <laughs> now we are at Bavuzuk Dam. Bifelzuk Dam is a dam here in the northeastern corner of the property. So we've got all these hippos compared to a little bit earlier. <laughs> oh, I love it when they all grunt like that. Very, very deep, deep sound. And that uh, travels very far. So even uh, those two hippos and the little baby that we saw a little bit earlier, they will even hear that. Oof. Oof, that one is not... So when we got to this dam, they were pretty much sitting, about maybe four or five of them are actually outside the water, just resting on the bank. So slowly but surely when the winter time starts coming in like this, you know, we're not in winter yet, but when we start changing, the season starts changing to becoming a little bit cooler, you find that the hippos tend to rest sometimes a little bit on the side of the, of the water on the bank and uh, just catching some sunrise. Oh, you know what we've got there? We've got a Nile monitor. Look down there. See that on the other side like this street? Like a water monitor or Nile, a Nile monitor lizard. Uh, yeah, just there. There. Look at that. How nice is that? So that's a, that now monitor is just enjoying the sun because you must remember in the last 24 hours there was no sun and all of a sudden it's like, yes, warm up my body. You can see even the head is up like that. He's loving, loving life. Adrian, age seven, uh, hippo tracks. He's got four toes on its foot. So four toes on its foot, and uh, it's just a part we call it an even-toed ungulate. So four toes or four nails on the foot there. So that's not a very big nail monitor. It's a small one. I think it might be the same one that we saw yesterday afternoon. We saw a nail monitor cross. Here. Was it yesterday or this morning? It was yesterday, yeah. Sorry, it was yesterday. I had to see it swimming around. But now perfect. Heating up the body, we call it ectothermic. So in other words, they pretty much get uh, um, the heat from the sun. And once the sun heats their body up and they heats their blood up, they become more, more active, gives them more energy. So it's almost like a solar panel if you think about a solar panel. 
more sun the solar panel draws in, the more energy it gets. And it'll swim around catching fish and frogs, baby birds eating eggs. It looks like that Nile monitor just came out the water. You can still see a little bit of a darkish color. It just feels like it's still wet. Hey, Panda. It looks like a little bit. Uh, I think that one just crawled out from the water. Uh, it's starting to move now towards the grass area. There we go. See, it's starting to move slowly. Got enough energy now from the sun. Now it's time to go and look for some food somewhere. So many times, even if when birds see them, they don't like them at all. So the birds will like dive bomb them, try and chase them away from their nests. Uh, it looks like it's gone further in there. It's still, it's still there, but slowly but moving. Should be moving out of sight. Now monitor is going into the grass. Bye bye. See you later. Good luck on your hunt for the afternoon. I'll see age eight. How small is a hippo's tail? How big or small is a hippo's tail? Well, it's not big at all. It is not big. <laughs> it's not long. It's not like a cat's tail or a elephant's tail, or a giraffe or a zebra's tail. They got very short, stumpy tails. Short, stumpy, long enough to fling the dung. That's about it. But it doesn't go much further down than the, the hind end. Yep, just to fling the dung. You look at something like a giraffe or elephant, or especially a giraffe. Mm, giraffes are good, they've got pretty tails. We're not going to hang around here for too long. Well, I think we might slowly but surely. I'm just going to quickly have a scan around here. Sometimes we get this beautiful kingfisher known as a malachite kingfisher that hangs around here. And I'm just going to put my binoculars on quickly here. And I'm just going to quickly give it a bit of a scan because we haven't, well, we didn't get much time to scan the dam yet. around and it's one of the most prettiest kingfishers they're very very small they're very pretty this is on safari now remember this is live and interactive so we'd love to hear from you to be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari.
well, welcome back everybody. And we've left those Impalas and the Wahlberg's Eagle and we've come to a spot where often we do find hyenas. So it's a very well used hyena den. And so this is an area that hyenas will give birth in. Mom will go inside there, give birth to the, her little cubs and they'll then spend the first couple of months within the den. It is a little bit overgrown. So it is quite tough to see, but there, there is a hole down there. Um, and it goes, there we go, as Paul works uh, some magic. There's a hole that goes down there and it might get into small little, smaller holes down in there for those little pups to then, or sorry, cubs to hide in. So it's a safe place for the hyenas. So are you asking why these uh, hyenas have fur? So that fur is there to keep those hyenas warm. I mean, being warm blooded, uh, that's fur then will allow them in the winter time in order to stay warm whereas if you, you speak about a cold-blooded animal like a snake or a reptile they need the sun in order to warm them up so you'll often find on hot days you might like even like a monitor lizard that Cedric showed you a little bit earlier on You'll often find snakes trying to gain energy by lying in the road, trying to get as much sunlight on them to gain energy in order to move around. But I just decided to pop into this hyena den just to see if there was any action. I haven't been here for a little while. But it seems like it is a little bit overgrown, so it tells us that there's no recent activity around this hyena den. So I think we will just continue and see if we can find anything else. Okay. Nadine, can you just say that question again, please? Sorry. Liz, are you asking when the hyena cubs will start hunting prey? So for the first while, the hyenas will only suckle. Um, they suckle for probably just under a year. And the hyenas will stay within that den site. And only after about six or eight months will they then start to move around with the clan. And I would say it's probably after a year that they'll then join in on the scavenging and on the hunts. Is still, still everybody on there? I just hit one of those branches on my, my way out here. But so you'll, you'll often find what happens with hyenas is... Just watch out there. So what often will happen with hyenas is that when they've got cubs, the, the mom will often stay at the den and the others will go out, the other clan members will go out and hunt and they might then go... So they'll go out and hunt and then they'll often bring small little carcasses or pieces of carcasses back to the den for those young hyenas to then feed on just because they they're not big enough in order to follow the clan out and about as they are looking to hunt or scavenge. But as I do continue looking for any hyenas or elephants or zebra or anything we come across, I'm going to send you over to Eric who wants to say hello.
Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here at Amakala on a very wet, wet, wet afternoon. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera. And this afternoon, we're going to try and be your eyes and ears on the wettest of weathers and the wettest of days. This afternoon, as normal, fairly windy well not fairly windy there's a, a little gust of of wind every now and then i'd say it's probably the lightest the wind has been throughout the whole shift it's actually quite nice however there is the other component which is wet mother nature has decided she's going to ho open the heavens on us and she she's been generous she's been very very gen <laughs> very generous um but uh, we are going to try and push through this very, very wet weather. See what we can see. Ava, baby hyenas are called the cubs. Well, because they are very similar, you know, to the dog and the, the cat family. Now, we call lions, like baby lion cubs, cubs. We call cheetahs, cubs. We call wild dogs, pups. But why, well, well, I suppose hyenas are much closer to lions than they are to wild dogs. But cubs is just a, it's just a term for small adolescent juveniles. Sure. Well, we were here, when was it? It was yesterday evening with our elephants. They were bashing around through the bushes over there. And uh, we had them not too far this morning. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure they had moved there. We had them moving east, which was generally seemed to symbolize out of the dune forest. Adam, uh, how many spots does a hyena have? I'm not actually too sure how many spots, you know. I think some of them, it tends to be quite quite all over the place, like zebra stripes. You, there's Some may have less than others, some may have more than others, some may be bigger than others, some may be smaller than others. I think to each hyena, they have their own unique amount of spots. I can hear the birds here, the southern bobo. Very lovely little bird. Sometimes they can get quite chubby if they eat too much. When we see them, we normally see them sitting on top of the trees with a very, very round belly. But nonetheless, a beautiful bird with a very, very nice call. So, as you can see, what you're basically seeing, all of this gray over here, this is all rain. I don't even know if you can see all the rain falling in between me and the camera, but nonetheless, it's still there. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
we've already had some flowers start to pop up. I'm waiting for the Karoo iris and the 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 other the very nice peachy orangey colour, the orange tritonia, the candelabra lilies, which sometimes actually look like tumbleweed. Um, at the moment, we've had the paintbrush lilies pop up, which is quite nice. But uh, we're going to wait and see. Maybe some daisies will start to come out as well. Now the bumper and the back of my head is going <laughs> to be in the way there. But as you can see, right in front of us are some paintbrush lilies. Have a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful little lily that looks a bit like a paintbrush. Of course, that's why they call the paintbrush lilies. And you'll find them popping up in little groups of three, sometimes up to six, seven, all over, but not everywhere. They don't just pop up everywhere. They, they're sort of very picky about where they decide to put their roots and decide to grow. I wish I could decide to grow whenever I wanted to. Thank you, Eric. Now nice you see some paintbrush lilies, but yes, I've got something interesting that I want to show you. A little bit of a quick uh, understanding of uh, leopards and uh, territories and uh, how far do they go and how many leopards are in this area. So of course, uh, we are in a reserve called the Sabi Sand. The Sabi Sand is around about 72,000 hectares, so it's quite a big reserve. Uh, private reserve. So what I've got here now, I've got a map. It's from a, a database called the Panthera database. And now all those little dots that you see on this board is uh, sightings pretty much in the fourth uh, quarter of last year. So it was pretty much for the last, uh, what's it, three months of uh, uh, last year and uh, all the sightings. So where we are based here, yeah, uh, we are based in this little area. This is where Juma is. We are based in this little area and this is where we pretty much traverse and this is all the leopards that we do usually see so it just shows you how many other leopards are all over the show here there's uh, practically between the females and males or with males and females together they say there's around about 83 different uh, individuals in the entire Sabi San so now you'll see with a female that we get to see quite often in this area her name is uh, Tlalamba so Tlalamba is all these light pink areas you see the light, light pink dots so that's all the sightings that the people have put down where they've seen her. So you can just see where Tlalamba is pretty much here at Juma. This is her territory. Nice little shape here. Not big, maybe about an eight square kilometer. So I just want to put down here, you know, you'll see Tlalamba. See, the light pink one, that's Tlalamba right there, Tlalamba. So that's her. So that's her territory. It's pretty much... And who else do we see there? So now we've got another one. It's like a dark bluish color. You see that dark blue one? It's also inside Tlalamba's territory. But you're thinking, but isn't it just supposed to be one female that controls the territory? Yes, it is. But this dark blue one is a female called, oh, sorry, called Nsumi. There, there it is, Nsumi. Now that female, is she does not have a territory. She's still too young. And she hasn't set up a territory yet, so she's just been pretty much moving through here. And you can see that she's also had another sighting of hers down here. So that's why she's like a nomadic female. So she won't be here for too long. Eventually, I think she's going to set her territory up in this little section here. You can see there's not many sightings of any other le female leopards around there. So I think Insumi has been seen quite a bit up here recently. And I think she's going to move in there and leave Tlalamba in that area. All right. So I can't copy what Nadine's saying there. It's just blowing quiet a bit in my ear. Yeah. Um, but there's also another female called Shadulu, and Shadulu is in this area. And Shadulu is a very dark, uh, dark pink and all that. Sorry, this. All right, so that is all about the leopards and all that. So I'm hoping that we're going to find Tlalamba. But yes, uh, all the kids, you can continue just uh, sending us uh, some more questions after the kids uh, drive. Maybe get some more amazing questions that we've, especially that we've been having this afternoon. Maybe we get some more uh, after the kids drive. I think for the next what's a half an hour, Panda? Yep. For the next half an hour. So yes, 
But uh, I think yeah, we're going to leave this one here and uh, we will discuss more leopards a little bit later on, maybe even lion prides. But for now, we are going to just sit here and enjoy this beautiful scenery around here at uh, Biffelzucht Dam. As you can see, we've got still some hippos that's playing around in uh, the back end. But yes, to all the kids that send comments and questions through this afternoon and as well for all the kids that's joined us on this afternoon's Kids Drive, thank you so much for sent through the ways and lies to discuss them. And uh, yes, make sure that uh, for the next Kids Drive tomorrow afternoon, same place, same time at 3.30 to 4.30. Make sure that you do join us on that kids' drive tomorrow afternoon. But from Panda, from the hippos, from the Wild Earth crew and myself, have a wonderful day further, but make sure that you continue sending questions in for the next half an hour. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon to everybody that's tuned in to watch the Sunset Safari. Welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve in the northern Sabi Sands. My name's Chad. On camera today we've got Mpo. And we've also got a special naturalist on the back, Prashala, is joining us this afternoon on drive. And we are out and about this afternoon on a beautiful day. As you can see, the sun is shining, there's not too many clouds in the sky. It seems like that cyclone has now moved on. It seems like it's raining at Amakala on and off. But the plan for this afternoon, we're going to see if we can maybe find some elephants for everybody watching this afternoon. And then maybe a leopard a little bit later on. Just a reminder to everybody that this is a live and interactive show, so please do send through your questions and comments you might have for any of the naturalists. If you would like to subscribe, uh, you can do so on our website. If you would like to join the conversation, you can do so on X using the hashtag Wild Earth. And we would be happy to answer any questions you might have for us. So it is quite amazing, it literally doesn't look like there's been any rain. I mean, the, the roads are much drier compared to what they were this morning. <laughs> Jackson, Gauri Dam is quite a big water hole. It's actually the biggest one that we've got. It's probably, I would say, feet isn't the greatest for me but probably 70 or 80 meters long and maybe 30 meters wide so it is a, a very big water hole can hold a very big pot of hippos in there and lots and lots of animals Jackson come down to drink at that water hole and there's actually a camera at Gauri Dam the Juma Dam Cam so if you would like to Jackson Maybe you can ask mom and dad if they can log on to go and show you Gauri Dam on the Juma Dam Cam. And then you'd have to wait for something to come down to drink in order to see the difference in size. 
compared to maybe an elephant coming down to drink and the water hole. But Jackson, if I do get an opportunity, if uh, we are quite close by to Gauri Dam, I'll definitely try swing past there for you and show you exactly how big it is. Logan wondering how big is the eagle? Oh, the vehicle. Uh, Logan, the, the vehicle is probably maybe four meters, four meters long. It's not the, the biggest of vehicles. It's actually a short wheel based vehicle. So it's much shorter than a normal vehicle that you'll drive on the road. It's a lot easier for us to maneuver and drive through bushes and things like that. Because we often do follow animals um, off the road through thicker bush like this around us, it makes it a lot easier to drive around trees and things like that and follow those elusive cats, the leopard or the lions that are moving through these areas. We are actually also getting new vehicles. They're busy getting the final touches at the, the camp. So in maybe a month, we should have those vehicles on the road. Yeah, so we're gonna continue maybe find some animals up ahead of us but for now i'm going to send you over to cedric and see what he's got yeah, we've got some nice female kudus well, got one in frame the other one just moved away now got like three four five of them together and beautiful antelope they are really stunning and why do i say female you can see she doesn't have horns if she's got these big spiral horns, then you will know it is a male. And she's just going behind one of these things. No, don't go behind him. I'm going to try and reverse it, but I think... All right, let me reverse a bit here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try. Still a few of them now. I'll see age seven years. We do get flash floods here. Yeah? Yeah, get flash floods. We've had them a few times. What is she listening out to? Look at those big ears. Those big, big ears, like satellite dishes on her head. You can see how she just uses them to listen out all the little noises around here. So we've got a very good sense of hearing. And she's enjoying the leaves from this black monkey orange nice and palatable leaves as you know kudus are browsers so they will just feed on leaves look at that nom 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 oh that's nice here's all those nice little young shoots coming through really enjoying the black monkey orange and this with the stunning white lines running down the body The males are quite impressive. The males much bigger, thicker neck, nice mane at the bottom of the neck, the mane is on top of the neck, and then they've got these big, like kind of, you know, the corkscrew, uh, uh, corkscrews that you get. That's how the male impala's horns look like. It looks like corkscrews. Sorry, I have to kill a fly there. Oh, looks like she has just had some milk. Looks like she's got a milk moustache. No, don't go in there. Where are you going? Where's the other one? Do you think we can get... The other one's gone as well. Alright, let's see if we can go a bit forward. 
Right, we're gonna try and get a little bit. Lily, Lily. Oh, mine that's gonna be very. Okay, we will be able to. There we go. <laughs> as long as she doesn't move forward again. So all the females that's around here now with this female, they are all related. It's like a family, all related. But the males do not remain back with these herds. The males will pretty much move away from the herds once they get to a certain age. And then they will go and join other males. Still listening out. You can see those ears still pointing that way. Sometimes we use them as our alarm system. So if you hear a kudu alarming, that's what we call that uh, alarm call. We hear like them sounds like a dog barking. And if you do hear them doing that, well, then you know that there is a predator that is lurking close by. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. So I think it's really hard to be a star in dealing with the, the elements. They seem to be all right. I don't see, yeah, they've all, I think, yeah, them feeding on the grass. Because a lot of the grass will have lots of water on it. So water is no longer there. For most animals, this will be a fairly common thing. You'll find a lot of them actually feeding during these times. And it seems weird. You're like, why aren't they hiding? They should be in the bushes and stuff like that. But no, they're not necessarily. They don't have to be. You know, they live out here. They were born out here. You know, they they are far 
far used to being out here than we are, um, especially with our nice warm homes and the blankets. I'm very envious of everybody at home with their blankets and their coffee on the couch. But at the same time, I mind. We're seeing wild animals. Alrighty then, so we're on the eastern boundary of uh, Juma now and uh, I'm going slowly down the eastern boundary, going south and uh, looking out for anything that is moving around in this area. Maybe some elephants, maybe a leopard. Riley, the fastest antelope species. Yo, I don't know. Uh, in this area. In this area. Fastest antelope species in this area will be, I will say, I would think maybe the kudu. It's got long legs. No, I'll say kudu. Mm, I'll say kudu long legs compared to impala. So, yes. But then I'll say the antelope that's got the quill way, like from 0 to 50. I will say maybe a small antelope, and there's one called the Steenbok. A Steenbok. They are small, but they got like very well developed hind legs and are built perfectly like, like a rabbit. Think about a rabbit. The rabbit's got those big hind legs, and what can it do? It can like hop far you know so same as the stembok they don't hop but the stembok will run with those very powerful hind legs and i think uh to me a stembok from uh zero to 50 i think they will be like the quickest off the mark because they're, they're small it's like a motorbike you got a motorbike is smaller than a big car so it's much quicker off the mark if it makes sense what do you think panda i think so nice well, so, yeah that makes sense if you're big and bulky, you got to take time to get that speed. But if you're small, they're just very, very clear. I'm hoping that we actually find a Steenbok, then we can actually show you how Steenbok looks and how small. I mean, they're that big. They're that big. They're small. They're part of the dwarf antelopes. They're very small. But my, my, can they run. Mm, this, I think with the humidity of all the rain and all the sunshine, the flies are out in numbers. There's like one million and one fly that's sitting on me at once. I think I saw it. We usually get stem box, yeah. We usually get them on the fire break, yeah. We usually find those little small antelopes around, yeah. Oh, uh, as you know, it's live. This is an interactive, interactive, interactive show. So, if you've got any comments or any great questions that you want to send through to us, and uh, while we're out here in the field, and if you are watching on the Wild Earth website, make sure that you do register so you can send those comments and questions through or if you want to just go on to a chat and chat to us go on to hashtag wild earth on twitter or x or on our youtube channel so that's like a car behind us Come on, Lullies. Lalamba should maybe make an appearance. I'm thinking where she was last in coming up that side. But now a lot of the tracks have been washed away this morning due to the rain that we had. So if there is fresh tracks now, it would have been very fresh. <laughs> Maureen, yes, Panda will definitely show you his socks. And I'm just going to sit back here and enjoy this moment. There's the one. Oh, let me just help. What, 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 what? <laughs> You're getting all tangled up there. There's the one and, and there's the other one. Sheep. Sheep. 
There's a little sheep. Yeah. Look at a little sheep. Yeah, he's got sheep shocks. Sheep, 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 sheep socks. <laughs> sheep socks. Yeah, lucky socks. That's so cute. That's nice. All different colors. Well, they're different colored socks in, but they're very nice. I like those ones, Panda. Yeah, I like sheep. Very cute. So, of course, Panda is uh, quite the stylissimo of uh, Wild Earth. Canine girl, yeah, bring on the lion magic. I wish I could even find a lion track. So I just thought I saw something here yeah, as I was talking. And no, it wasn't nothing. Uh, canine girl, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what we can find. Um, think about where the lions, it's the two black dams, we don't know where they are. Kambulas were last seen down at Sabi Sabi, all the way in the southern areas of the Sabi Sands with their sister. Uh, Mohawk and his sons went further west into Ottawa. Nkuumas went somewhere, yeah. And I think Nkuumas might be on Half Buns or Shirley's, another two properties that's further that way. So, once again, the lions are all over the show, but not on, not, not on Juma. Just not on Juma. It'll be nice to start getting those buffalo, those herds of buffaloes coming onto Juma. Once we can get those herds of buffalo heading into this direction, just then uh, pretty much will lure the lions into this area. <laughs> Darcy Miller, you're telling, uh, telling Nadine that she must say sheep socks 10 times very quickly. Uh, I, want, I don't even want to do it now while I'm live because I think maybe I might even have a slip of a uh, tongue there. So I'll, I think I'll avoid that and I'll do that off air and uh, see if, if I can do it right. So yes, <laughs> what do you think Panda? <laughs> I'd rather just leave it for now. Nadine at least she can say it in my ear. So if she does... Uh, a slip there then I'll let you let everybody know <laughs> sure we say so use the sheep socks to lure the rosettes in yeah I think old panda must just dangle his legs outside the vehicle and yeah we might be then we might be lucky with uh, a leopard that will follow us stalking uh stalking panda's legs that would be funny Yo, there, there's a fly here there's one fly there's one fly that's deciding to fly and sit on my face at the same spot every single time yeah one fly <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I need to get that Australian hat, you know, with the the corks that's dangling along here. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that's what the, they, that's why they're there. In Australia, they've got loads of flies, even worse than worse than yeah. All right, let me know. Should I go west or not? Should I go and take a look on Zoe's in that area? Maybe should do maybe tortoise pan. Oh, I think so. I think I think that might be the best idea. Got a feeling, the west is best. We are celebrating World Water Day with a five-day special. Immerse yourself in exclusive Live at the Waterhole content. Keep up with the wild waters of the world with special guests. Tune in for live drives around the deep dive into our watering holes. Dive in this World Water Day with Wild Earth.
Nadine, that would be wonderful if we could find a leopard on a carcass. And it's, watch out there. Um, it's been some time since I have seen a, a leopard in a tree with a carcass and I really do enjoy seeing leopards in trees and feeding and it's just amazing how strong a leopard is to drag an impala carcass vertically up the tree and then position it perfectly so that carcass doesn't move or doesn't fall. Yes, sometimes it does fall but a lot of the time that carcass then does stay up in the tree for two or three days that leopard feeds on it. Phenomenal animals, leopards. Very elusive, spending time in thicker areas. I was going to switch off, we've just driven through a drainage line and Sometimes leopards like to rest in these drainage lines, so we're just going to sit a little bit and listen. Maybe we can hear crunching of bones. Alright, so we are bumbling around trying to find some more animals. We left our red heart to be as they weren't interested on being on camera. They were too busy feeding on the grass and licking the grass up as well. I think uh, there'll be there'll be a lot of animals in the war, sorry, there'll be lots of bir animals in <laughs> the bushes. All right, I think we're sending you up to Cedric who's got a bird. That's why I said bird earlier. Oh. This is a first for me, everybody. This is a first for me. Finding red-billed oxpecker chicks where the parents are busy feeding it. Look at this. This is brilliant. And of course they nest in these harvests here in the dead in the dead trees. And you can see the he's like, I want! Give it to me! And of course feeding it the little ticks, and that's what they mainly eat. They feed on ticks from animals. This is brilliant. I've never seen this. I've never seen a red built ox. Oh, it's going back to the little nest. So that's a little nest there. So there's two chicks. Oh, and fell into the hole there. So it looks like two chicks in the nest there. Oh, it's waiting. I'm waiting for the parents to bring back some more food. I've never seen this. This is the first time I've seen this in my career. So, wow. Wow, wow, wow. to the little ones shouting away I want food I want food it's look at the little yellow beaks so very soon they will actually start moving away from the nest it's see this is amazing oh, I can't wait for them to come back so we've got one or two adults remaining at the uh, I was gonna say den <laughs> at the nest you can see the one adult at the back So maybe almost like um, like babysitting. Maybe the one is just babysitting, making sure that they're all safe. Oh, it seems like the other adults flew off now. So we are just going to sit here for a little bit longer. We all definitely can't wait for the other adults to make their way back again and come and feed these little ones. That one hasn't got any food. We're chasing after that one for nothing. Oh, there, there we go.
Thank you, Maria. This is brilliant. I, it is, as I say, this is something spectacular. I, I haven't, I haven't witnessed this before from uh, red billed oxpeckers. So uh, at least now we know where their nest is, and we can come back here again tomorrow and double check on them. So just like the woodpeckers and the uh, woodland kingfisher and some of the barbered species that also nest in these uh, dead trees and in the little holes. So they don't really build a nest like in the fork of any trees. They will use the, the hollowed out trunks and that as their nesting sites. So I think these two are just remaining here, just looking after the youngsters and uh, I'm going to just wait for the other adults to return. Okay, that one has moved off. While the darts, yes, they will regurgitate their little ticks for the chicks. And bring it up. And you'll find that the little chicks, uh, the beaks, will, from the yellow color, they'll start turning to more of a grayish color when they start moving around with the adults, and then eventually they get their full ad adult plumage, which would be then, of course, the beautiful, striking red beaks. But now they've got the little yellow beaks. That's very interesting, eh? This is super cool, eh, Panda? Yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. Wow, wow, wow. At the perfect age where they're coming out the nest now, you know, <laughs> and begging for food from the from the parents. And I think that as well, they pretty much uh, the entire family, the entire flock of red-billed oxpeckers will almost assist one another with their their chicks. Some of them will, if it's even not even the parents, might even come back and actually regurgitate some ticks up for the. For the little youngsters, yeah. Yeah, 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 watch. Yeah, here comes another one. One adult just returned now. I don't know if it returned with some extra ticks or not too sure. Just below you'll find there at the bottom. Well, yes, you never know what you're going to find on safari. Every day something. Oh, oh, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Come down slowly. <laughs> It's like Mpo when he gets to back to the camp and uh, the kitchen door opens. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's feeding the other one. <laughs> oh, that one went all the way down there and it didn't get anything. Well, the one that remained at the nest looks like is uh, getting majority of the food. That's not nice. I think uh, <laughs> As these two chicks are shouting away yeah, for food, then we will name them Paul and BK. <laughs> there we go. So of course we get the other species of uh, oxpecker, the yellow-billed oxpecker, but we don't get to see them too often yeah, in the northern Sabi sand. The most common one, of course, is the red bolt. Shiv, yes, they can be uh, at risk for, uh, you know, any predators can come. Uh, uh, come to this uh, side and get something like uh, snakes, 
make their way up to this area. So while shouting like that is not a good idea. Maybe that's why they've got the adults still pretty much you know, keeping an eye on them. Making sure that there's no predator that's making its way up to the nest. And then you've got something like your African Harrier Hawk. Now we've seen the African Harrier Hawk numerous times. And they've got that double jointed knee. So an African Harrier Hawk will take full advantage of the situation with these two chicks. Because clearly these two cannot fly as of yet, so they're still hanging around on the tree. But I don't think it's going to be too long for them to really start taking off and moving around with the adults. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs, and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. So we have found two giraffes in a nice uh, open clearing and as you, as we went live, this is exactly what they have done. They've now started to disappear into a little bit more of a thicker area, but I might just see if I can drive a little bit more uh, forward and maybe we can get a, a gap through the bushes. So if you bear with me for two seconds, I will just try and reposition. But it is a male and female giraffe, and it's quite nice to be able to see the difference between the male and the female. If we are able to get another view, which I'm sure we will. I feel like they've just disappeared. There's the back end of one. And pause that fine. So we do have the, the back end of the, the male. And he seems like he is actually following this female. And what you, you might find is that the, the female could be an estrus. And so that's why this male's slowly following her. 
yesterday we were talking about giraffes and how they tell that a, a female is an estrus and it's often that they'll test the urine. The cheetahs and other animals, they are beautiful animals. Giraffe is uh, often a firm favorite for a lot of guests and I'm gonna see if I can get one more view of these uh, giraffe for everybody. If you bear with me for two seconds, it'd be nice to see the male and the female together. It's always nice to compare the difference between a male and a female giraffe. And poor if I go here, it's fine. It's I hope the sun isn't directly into the to go forward. Okay. Looks like we have now been able to finally get a beautiful view of these giraffes. And this is the female that's standing closest to us. And a lot of people are now, I'm sure, going to start sending in questions. But you thought the females are lighter in color compared to the males. It's not always the case. I mean, in this case here, you can see that the, the female is a lot darker compared to the male. And a lot of the times, it's not that way. A lot of the times you find the males a lot darker compared to the females. And then maybe if we can zoom in just a little bit, if you have a look at the ossicones or the, the horns on top of their heads, have a look at the difference. The one on the left being the male, and then the one on the right, the female. And you can see how thick and big the male giraffe's ossicones are. So Veronica, the, the females, they won't use their um, ossicones for anything. Um, I mean, the, the males use their ossicones for fighting. So they do what we call necking. And so that's the, the territorial fighting that giraffe will do. And that's why the males are much bigger and thicker compared to the females, because they, they go through quite a, a battle, a fierce battle. And I mean, you can imagine the force that they use with those massive necks of theirs hitting one another and trying to fight for females. So that's why the males are much bigger compared to the, the females. The females, they almost look like they can be a little bit brittle almost, like they can break just because of how small they are. But they also, you, you can see the size difference between the male and the female. I mean, this female is quite a big female giraffe, but you can see how that male towers over her. Jacqueline, I'm glad you are enjoying this view that we've got of these two beautiful giraffes. Such stunning animals. And I'm glad they didn't move off too far or into too thick of bush. Ooh. I thought there was going to maybe be a little bit of a mount from that male. So, I mean, you can see now what I was saying a little bit earlier is that female could be an estrus. This male giraffe literally isn't letting that female go anywhere. As soon as the female does move, the male follows right behind her. And they are walking off into quite a thick area um, in that general direction. But what I can do is maybe we'll try and loop around to the next road and see if we can then get a view for everybody. That sun is also, if we do turn like this, it's gonna be directly into the camera. So I'll try and loop around and see if we can then get a, another view. Let's see if I can navigate my way out of here. Was it right that time? So I want to drive over 
unnecessary trees. But it, it does seem like those two giraffes are on the move. I mean, they're slowly moving, feeding. So I don't think they're going to spend too much time in this thick area. We're going to see if we can get a, another view. I think there's going to be a beautiful sunset this afternoon. There's not a cloud in the sky. Oh. There is actually some clouds to our west, so there might not be a sunset, but we'll have to wait and see. But while I do try and loop around and get another view of these giraffe, I'm going to send you back over to Cedric, who's still got his ox pickers. Well, it looks like they're all busy ox pecking this side, and uh, yeah. Unfortunately, no adults as of yet. We're still waiting. The two youngsters are still there, one in the nest and one just to the left on the branch. And they're just waiting patiently like us. We're all waiting. <laughs> oh, don't fall in there. Just stay there. Stay in your little nest. And move too much. Another one was trying to climb or get down the, that uh, trunk too quickly a little bit earlier on and almost came tumbling down so I think just get so excited when the parents are here for food they just want food but yeah I'm gonna wait patiently yeah I'm not gonna go anywhere for now I really want to see the parents come back I just want to see the feeding frenzy It is really amazing just to see these two youngsters are so active. And he's not just remaining inside of the nest where we can't see them. Well, I'd just say give and take maybe a, a week, a few more days or a week, and then they'll, they'll start leaving the nest area. Dela, you say baby vampire birds. Oh, Dela, yes. True. Hemophagia. So hemophagia means something that uh, pretty much uh, drinks or feeds on blood. And uh, that's exactly what uh, oxpeckers do. Hemo, blood, phagia. So hemophagia. So many times you'll find, especially on uh, buffaloes. So you see those Cape Buffaloes when they've got those big sores on their backs and on the sides and that. And then you see all the oxpeckers busy feeding on the blood. So you can understand why they are known as the vampire bird. Della, you got that one spot on. It sounds like Wendy that's coming our way. That's not thought it was. Ah, no. Thanks, Nadine. Come on, Oxpeck, come on, parents. So you'll find that the yellow billed Oxpeckers, they will tend to rather breed more in the northern side of Kruger and a little bit further north from where we are compared to the red billed Oxpeckers. Pretty much find them throughout the park. Uh, I see one coming back. Is it one? No, it's not. It's a forktail dronga. I almost thought they're coming back from their shopping. I, I think I hear them. No? No? No. Envy, I'm not too sure how long it's going to take for them to hatch. Uh, maybe pff, incubation of period of about my uh, 15 20 days I uh, got not a clue I think Nadine will tell me very shortly I'll say 15 to 20 days I'm just taking that's a rough estimate now I'm just uh, I'm sucking that information out of my thumb And then we 
we've got some uh, Birchall starlings to the far right. So while we wait for the parents to return, let's go. They've got another two different species of birds here. We've got the Birchall starling to the right. Two, pretty much uh, two of them there. And, and sometimes you'll find they use the same thing as uh, the oxpeckers. So they will also nest in hollowed out trees. No ways, was all right, two weeks. Ah, what a guess, thank you. So to incubation for a oxpecker is two weeks. Thank you. Well, that was a lucky guess. <laughs> And then we had, oh no, it's gone now. The forktail drongo it was there, but that's also now disappeared. I think so, um, Nadine, most birds will be about two weeks. That's what I was thinking. But I mean, then you got the bigger birds, the bigger birds, um, like your, the wigs, for instance. I mean, what the incubation for the spotted eagle owl is 30 days. So it's a little bit longer compared to the oxpeckers now. I think because those are ground nesting birds, you know, with the uh, spotted eagle owl. So I think the birds need to be a little bit more developed compared to the ones that's uh, tree nesting uh, birds. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. I know this giraffe is be behind this little bush here, but it's quite close to us and I don't want to start up and reposition because this giraffe may just then move off and I wouldn't want to do that. We'll just be a little bit patient. It's still a beautiful view.
looks like that giraffe maybe wants to give itself a little scratch. There we go. On that marula branch. Getting right into the ear. <laughs> And then it continues. And that female is a little bit in front of this male. So he's keeping a keen eye on that female. But such a magnificent creature. Always amazing to see giraffes. All right, well, not much changes here. We still got the two chicks, one is sitting on the outside, another one is inside the hole and we are all waiting, we are still waiting patiently, so yeah, nothing has changed. <laughs> um, apparently I just got an update now that one of the gentlemen said that there was wild dog tracks coming onto Juma on the northeastern corner towards Biffelzook Dam, so I might actually try and uh, maybe start heading into that direction and try and give them a hand. Uh, Chris, if one falls from the tree and they'll feed that little one that's fallen from the tree on the ground. Hopefully that little one uh, stays safe. Oh, there's like a little tail there at the end. Look at that. Is it a tail? Right at the end of the branch there, like a little tail that's waving in the... <laughs> it's a little squirrel. It's hiding in there as well. <laughs> I just saw this little tail waving around. <laughs> oh, that is... that's wonderful. This, this, this tree is full of life. Full of life. You got uh, a little look like a dray there where the squirrels are busy you know, not nesting, but uh, where they're busy collecting their nuts and keeping it up there and maybe just holding their little youngsters outside and then we've got our red-billed oxpecker nest and we had the two birchall starlings. I won't be surprised if the birchall starlings also got a nest here somewhere in this tree. I think if we, just, if we stay here long enough, it's going to be like a hotel, this. We'll see every kind of species that uses dead trees in coming to this one and, you know, Utilizing some or other form of hole, yeah. That is amazing. Just shows you. That's what I always say. It's so important for, you know, it is sad for trees that, you know, elephants ring bark them and, you know, they, they pretty much die the next season. But sometimes it's also very important because what happens? It creates homes for other animals. So without this dead tree, you know, if you don't have any dead trees around you, you're not going to have any of these oxpeckers around you. These oxpeckers won't have a home. They won't be able to nest in this or breed in this area. The same as squirrels. You know, the squirrels will also struggle quite a bit to barb it, your starlings. So these dead trees are so, so, so important to many, many different species of animals to kind of utilize as a home. So, yeah. And then we always say the... Elephant is the architect of the bush. Oh, the squirrel's awake. Sorry, Panda. The squirrel's awake. It is... Hello! Hey, it's awake. Let's see what it's going to do now. It's, had it's good old afternoon nap. Now it's busy grooming itself. There we go. It's got actually the nicest uh, apartment on this tree. It's got a nice look out there. It's, it's amazing. It's like the, the penthouse apartment, eh? It's like the... Yeah, the balcony and all. Huh. I'm jealous now. Mm, it's very... Uh, yeah, it's a very funky architect that almost looks like a... Um, like a head of something with an eye and a big mouth. You know, the balcony. Almost looks like another animal. Hmm, eh? it's actually quite a, a quite a beautiful little section. This, and, and the squirrel's like, "Yep, doing my doing my yoga on the balcony." <laughs> He's doing his yoga on the balcony there. <laughs> I think Steve would be very impressed with the squirrel. <laughs> He's like, "Yep, that's the one." <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, that is quite amazing. You have to use your imagination on that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Come on. Grooming itself nicely. There we go. Oh, a nice scratch. Maybe a bit of a stretch. Oh, more scratching. If I was a squirrel, I would use that that section definitely. That would have been mine. The best spot. And the little. Oxpeckers are going crazy again. Something to pull again. Oh, I think the adults are back. The adults are coming back. The adults are back. There we go. Yay! Don't fall down. There we go. Get your fair share in there. One is very persistent. Cheetahs and other animals, yeah. Baby birds are oh, they're wonderful to watch. So exciting. But look at this one. Yeah, yeah now that is muscles and paw through and through. <laughs> oh, here comes the next one. Shame. I see what you're doing now. Oh, clever. So they kind of almost dropped one in there to let the little ones come back to the the nest. That was clever. So like don't go too far. This is where you should be hanging out. I don't think I've had such a fantastic time at one spot with the birds and with the dead tree and all the different things happening. I think this has been absolutely amazing. No, exactly, Nadine. It's just like sometimes you think you just see the oxpeckers, but you have to see what you're looking at, and then all of a sudden you get. Uh, Get this amazing sighting coming through. Hmm. Oh, it's going into where the hey, it's going to where the poor squirrel is. All right, now where's it? Where's this? Oh, there's a squirrel at the hole. The squirrel's looking at the hole. <laughs> Look at the hole. He's just like looking through that hole. It's like, what are you doing on my balcony? <laughs> Look at that eyeball. <laughs> He's like, oh, he's like, he's not impressed, not impressed at all for that, uh, <laughs> that Oxbecker taking up there. He's like, no, that's not the, that's not the way we work here. Mi casa es su casa, as they say. You say your cat's going crazy because of these young birds. I can imagine they will get the cat's ear, ears up very quickly. But I'm just, uh, this squirrel is, uh, it's. Uh, that is brilliant. And you know the squirrel, that, it's coming out, it's like, yep, there we go. Coming out of my little apartment. It's just been invaded by some oxpeckers. Mm. 
Now I'm sure they're very tolerant with with one another. No. Oh. 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 Okay, well. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's going after the squirrel. <laughs> what? That, I thought, I'm very tolerant of one another. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. It looks like that did not happen at all. That uh, oxpecker was not happy with, with that squirrel coming out of the hole. <laughs> uh, I think maybe that was what was happening. The oxpecker knew that the squirrel was in there. So I was just waiting for it to come out and it can at least go for it and say, hey, you're not supposed to be here. We've got chicks. We've got little ones here that we're looking after. But I mean, the squirrel won't do anything to the chicks. No, I guess it's just the protective nature of a parent. Oh, looks like the chicks are not quiet. There's a saying in Afrikaans, Magis vol, Uchis tu, means stomach full, eyes closed. All right, <clears throat> I think we're going to slowly start moving away from this fantastic sighting for the after. This has been my, this has been a fantastic sighting. <laughs> I absolutely was entertained from the word go. Yeah, yeah I think this was brilliant. But we'll definitely follow up on these youngsters again tomorrow. At least we know where they are, so you can come and sit here again. All right, so we, we're going to see different feeds, maybe like Okokuyo during our ad pods. Uh, Okokuyo there in Namibia. We'll go through to that feed during the ad pods. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
So we are approaching Gauri Dam now and Jackson I do hope you are still watching. You were wondering a little bit earlier on in the show how big Gauri Dam was and I'm about to show you exactly how big Gauri Dam is. Also very exciting there are tracks of some wild dogs that are heading in the direction of Juma from the northern boundary and they are looking like from the tracks that they're on the hunt so the dogs are running and if you ever have followed dogs on the move they can move very very fast and in all different directions so they could literally pop up anywhere and I'm just gonna stop here and we can now Jackson have a look how big Gauri Dam is. It's a beautiful woodlands kingfisher that's calling just next to us also and there's also one lonely hippo inside Gauri Dam. Oh there's two hippos not just one hippo. So Jackson as you can see this water hole is a very very big water hole. It does look like a younger one. I'll just have to wait and see. Again I was just yeah there you can see it is a smaller hippo. There's three of them actually. Maybe it's mom, dad and then a youngster. It's uh, my favorite part of the day now. The sun is starting to set. Canaan girl, it is magnificent. Very, very beautiful. The water is looking a little bit like glass. It's nice for some slalom skiing. <laughs> You'd have to just go round and around in circles in the dam. I think you might get a little bit dizzy if you had to ski in Gauri Dam and you might have to try and avoid these three hippos. You can only imagine that mom and dad would be very protective over that youngster in the water so I wouldn't suggest going skiing. But I can already feel my heart rate's getting a little bit higher knowing that there are some wild dogs somewhere not too far from us. The tracks are along the northern boundary coming towards Juma. So I do think from here after this beautiful scene we will head up in that direction. A beach bunny we have seen lots and lots of different types of butterflies this season. Trishala actually literally as we drove out of camp this afternoon, Trishala said, wow, so many butterflies. And there, there's lots and lots of different butterflies that are out and about, especially after the rain. So maybe tomorrow morning, if we do get an opportunity, I will see if we can find any butterflies for you. There is a herd of impala on the, the other side of Gauri Dam. I just saw one or two of them getting a little bit nervous, but they seem like they have started to settle down now. How amazing is this hippo though? You can see how it is just resting its head. And I can only imagine that it's resting its head GC, it is amazing when the dam has small little ears. Well, now they have six small little ears. Trishala, what's your fa favorite part of the day? It's um, dusk, just as the sun is starting to set, but the like, lights begin to start turning on. 
So Chuchal is saying that her favorite part of the day is dusk, um, just as the sun's starting to set and the lights are turning on. All different naturalists or guides will have their favorite parts of the day, but mine is this part now. Nadine's asking you, Trishala, what you would like to see before the end of the drive. I would love to see Tlalamba. Trishala would love to see Tlalamba. So we'll also keep a lookout for Tlalamba. I mean, the area where those tracks of the wild dogs are heading in is where we had the tracks of that female leopard this morning. So maybe she is around there. Nobody's asking me what I would like to see this afternoon. <laughs> now Trishala is shouting from the back. Well, I have, I have discussed a couple of times that uh, wild dogs and leopard are my two favorite animals. So what I would really love to see is Tlalamba up in a marula tree with an impala kill and the wild dogs at the bottom jumping up on their back legs trying to get to that impala carcass. How phenomenal would that be? And I'm just closing my eyes now, just like this hippo in front of us is doing, imagining how that sighting will play out for us. And we've still got a little bit of time in order for that to happen. Paul, Jackie is saying that she hopes that you also get to see those wild dogs today. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And Paul's saying yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. He says that it would be Ioba. <laughs> the spirits are very, very high this afternoon on old Wendy to see something magical. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. AfriCam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
<laughs> Trishala can't wait to get in front of the camera. I won't give her the microphone um, for her to, to speak, but I think it'll be nice for everybody just to see her face once again on the Wild Earth show on this beautiful sunset safari. And she could not be more excited to show her face. But what a special scene here at Gari Dam. All right, so I'm in the Mulawati drainage line and as I was coming this way, there was fresh male leopard tracks coming in this Mulawati. And why? Because it was raining this morning. Remember, we had rain this morning and it's on top of all the rain and on top of all the vehicle tracks as well. But coming from Twin Dams from the southern side of Juma, with that male leopard coming all the way up north. So I'm hoping, uh, but the only problem it is, I'm sure it is uh, Mulawati, that male leopard. and. Uh, I'm hoping they just uh, decide to take cover from us somewhere and just lie on the sand for us and wait. I do apologize in advance. We might have a bit of a breakup in picture. If we do, I do apologize in the, in, in, in the drainage. All right, just, let's take a look here. I just have to go very slowly here. Mm. And typical, this uh, drainage line's nice habitat for leopards. They love this, and uh, and it's nice and thick for them. I'm like, please, please be here somewhere. Uh, sorry, you're right there. It's a little bit long and uh, we just have to make sure that we bend that aerial. So I'm looking up on in every tree at the moment, every tree under every bush here. I'm just taking a look if I can pick up on any other tracks. Nothing further, nothing here. It's all down that side. There or either that and he went to Twin Dams and he cut across towards Treehouse Dam. Very possible, very, very possible. And he might have done that. So. If I don't see anything else here, I'm going to head over to Treehouse Dam and just double check there. Come on, Leopardo, where are you? Uh, and you can see it's from this afternoon, those tracks. Was it like two, three hours ago, maybe an hour ago? Watch your side there, Panda. Ha. Maureen, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. I think we're not trying to jinx the situation, but yeah, yeah we might be a bump into the ghost very soon. All right, I'll just have to maneuver a little bit around here just to make sure that this uh, Ariel doesn't get snagged in the tree. Got there, Panda? Ah, oh, well done. Oh, it's just nice and cool in the drainage line. You can understand why they enjoy the drainage line. It's so, so cool. All the cold air pretty much just sinks into these low-lying areas. And it becomes so, so cool. Yeah, there's no tracks of him yet. 
No, he must, I think, we heard squirrels going crazy that side. I've got a feeling he's cut across. And he's cut across towards the other side. So let's go around. Should be fine. Should be fine. Ah, oh, there we go. That was the last one. Oh, there's only 30 minutes left. Oh, right. we only got 30 minutes left of the sun set safari. Wow, that uh, that went very quick. Hmm. But yes, please uh, keep chatting to us. This is live, this is interactive. I've been enjoying myself so much this afternoon. Well, as always, it's always so much fun. All right, so there's nothing else. So I'm thinking if it's the last 30 minutes, I might just give a a last little go, as I said, towards Treehouse Dam, and then we're going to go around. I've got a feeling it's cut towards where the sun is setting. So I'm going to go around that way and uh, see, maybe bump into him at Treehouse Dam. What do you think, Panda? It's good, huh? Yeah, Nadine, I think Mawati should be enjoying a good sunset at Treehouse Dam, because it is quite a stunning sunset. Let's go and take a look. Sorry, this cable's hooking everywhere. Ah, there we go. Kind of. All right, let's go around. Beautiful, beautiful sunset, and I think uh, this is now the perfect time for us to find a, a leopard somewhere. Home. This is exactly the time. I wonder where Chad is. I wonder what he's doing. Hmm. It smells like wild dogs here. Eh? It smells like wild dogs. Alright, let's head over to Chad while we continue heading to Treehouse Dam to see if we can follow up on this leopard. So we have found the beautiful sunset. I said a little bit earlier that there is most likely going to be a gorgeous sunset and a gorgeous sunset it is. So I do know a lot of people really enjoy just taking in the sunset moments. So I'm gonna be quiet for just a little bit while we watch the sun disappear over the horizon. Vili, it is stunning, this sunset view. 
And we are sitting on quarantine, which is a open clearing not too far from Juma Camp. And Trishala was just saying now that it's a great area for where these wild dogs might pop out. So while we are just sitting enjoying the sunset, we also keep an eye out for the wild dogs. There's also quite a large herd of impalas behind us. So that's my, that might be what the wild dogs come here for. Lucy, indeed, uh, amazing sunset here in the, the Sabi Sands. And Paul was literally just saying before we went live, all we need now is the male and female giraffe to be walking in picture silhouetted across the beautiful sky. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. Sky is on fire. It is a beautiful sunset this afternoon. Uh, I've just made my way towards one of the dams called Treehouse Dam at the moment. I made my way into this area due to maybe that male leopard, maybe all more whitey, might come into this area for us. Because you know that that male leopard, you do not find him, he finds you.
Catherine, yes, it's beautiful sunset this afternoon. Lovely colors. Almost got like this pinkish purple colors coming through. All different. Very interesting. Oranges. Oh, it's, 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 it's a stunning afternoon. I think because the air is so clean due to the rain that we've been having. So all the smog and dust and everything has uh, pretty much settled due to the rain. So it's like such a clean, clean sky. It gives us this crispy, clean colors that's coming through. As quick as those colors have come up, that's as quick as they are disappearing. Is it oh hey or hey? Is it hey? And then the second time was oh hey. Yeah. yeah. Let's say hey. Okay. Hey. Yes. Uh, hey. Uh, yes. So it's beautiful colors from the sunset tonight. Really nice. Always striking. Perfect for a good ending of the day. And always just to reflect on what's happened today and how nice this day was. I mean, we did have quite a interesting morning with all the rain but that's fine you can just see that the, the life this afternoon has just kind of sprung out quite a bit with all the birds in song hippos were quite happy this afternoon as well so yeah everything seems like it's happy like the rain has brought happiness indeed Oh, we are losing color to it. You want to go up under? Yeah, let's do it. All right, yeah, let's go. That was a lovely sunset. Beautiful time to sit here and just enjoy this uh, amazing, amazing picture. Let's go. Let's go. Give it our last little loop that we're going to do. See if we can find that male leopard. All right. While we do that, let's head over to Chad. Good luck, setters, on your male leopard track up in the northern or southern parts. So we are after that beautiful sunset we are still on quarantine which is a nice big open area here on juma and we're hoping that those wild dogs may just make an appearance here so we we're just driving around checking the roads seeing if there's any tracks of them because literally wild dogs you can miss them in a in a heartbeat so Lion dog, the dung beetles, they, there should be some dung beetles. Um, sometimes you, you don't see too many dung beetles when the, the weather is bad, like when there's a, a little bit of rain, they often will burrow into little holes and things like that. But now that there's a little bit of sunshine, we might get to see some. And often if you find some fresh elephant dung, rhino dung, buffalo dung, 
you might get to see them so I will definitely be keeping a lookout to see if I can see any dung beetles for you maybe tomorrow morning it does, it does seem like it's gonna be a sunny morning tomorrow so there might be quite a lot of small little critters that might be out and about so we hope that there will be some dung beetles oh squirrel on the road gone always got to make sure when I, I turn and there's a road going off to the other side I always look down it as long as possible just to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything it's been a, a number of times where I've done that and seen something walking up the road maybe a, a leopard or a lion there's one impala that's just run off there there was quite a large herd of impalas in this area Maybe they've moved down towards Gari Dam, which it might be worthwhile after we've done a nice big loop here on quarantine, just to go and see. Okay, I'm getting some information from Nadine that the big herd of Impala is down by Gari Dam. And it's also nice that Nadine is able to see the the dam cam here at Juma so she will definitely let me know if there is any sign of those wild dogs down there I mean she might just see impalas running for their lives because also interesting with the impalas Ellen thanks very much uh, I hope for either the wild dogs or a leopard before the show ends we still got 15 minutes so a last minute ditched effort for wild dogs and leopard is still on the cards and I was just saying now that with the wild dogs when they're running after impalas so often impalas will alarm call at predators but they don't alarm call at wild dogs just because they know that they've literally got no time to alarm call at them because of the speed that those dogs are running at, they will literally see them and they'll just run as fast as they can to try and get away from those dogs. A few days ago, I was actually chasing one or two wild dogs down our, our boundary road live on, I think it was a sunrise safari. They were chasing a big male impala down the road there's nothing more exciting for me personally than following dogs on the hunt and it is perfect time for also a leopard to be moving around it's quite nice and cool now that sun has dipped behind the beautiful Drakensberg mountains and it's a nice pleasant temperature at the moment so I'm gonna drive just a little bit further away from quarantine and check one of the the main roads it's where I found Mulwati the male the other day maybe he's back on a territorial patrol or just for Trish Clalamba to pop out nothing that way Lucy you hoping to see some bush babies I will keep a lookout in the, the trees, maybe see if we can spot a bush baby jumping around. So this road off here to the right hand side is where we had the, the tracks of that leopard 
this morning so that leopard could be somewhere around this area and often it's quite nice to drive a main road because it's often that this might be a territory territorial boundary for leopards and um, it might just split their territory with another leopard's territory so that's why we do often check these main roads within a reserve and just a reminder to all the viewers that there will be a town hall happening on the 15th of March at 7 o'clock with James and Andre and they're going to be chatting about the wild earth developments as well as the new vehicles here on wild earth and it will be live and interactive so you will be able to send through any questions and comments that you might have for James or Andre regarding where wild earth is going so that's the 15th of March at 7 o'clock don't miss out Amazing if we were just then if we were just see a leopard walk into the road up of us, maybe coming down the road towards us. Get a beautiful walk by. Missed having a leopard walk the vehicle. There is something about it when a leopard walks past you and just gl just glances up. And the leopard just glances up at you as it walks past. But this is also a time where leopards might even rasp. So we've just stopped here on this road and we might take the next couple of minutes just to listen out if we are able to hear any sound that might point us in the direction of a last minute leopard. We are celebrating World War Today with a five day special. Immerse yourself in exclusive Live at the Waterhole content. Keep up with the wild waters of the world with special guests. Tune in for live drives around a deep dive into our watering holes. Dive in this World War Today with Wild Earth.
going through the spider web here now. Yo. <laughs> I don't know. As long as I don't have that spider on me, I'm happy. Oh, that was a big spider web that I just put my face straight into it. Oh. I'm sure Nadine is very happy that it happened to me. <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> that's exactly. I knew Nadine was going to say, ah, yeah. <laughs> Take that. All right, heading slowly. Man, it could be worse. Yeah, I know, it could be worse. I actually almost had a bat flying into my into my face the other night. La -di -di, la -da -da. It is, a, it is definitely, it's quite emotional watching something get killed out here, um, especially if it doesn't die very quickly. So you will have noticed that we've turned on the infrared. Um, we, it is starting to get a little bit darker here on Juma. So we've switched it on. We do also have Trisha in the back looking out for one of her favorites, which is a chameleon. And just the apologies for the picture breakup. Hopefully we will get that sorted shortly. So Trichala has the spotlight in her hand and she's moving side to side, looking for any chameleons that might be on the trees resting. And what she's looking out for is any different color on the tree that might stand out. So the first time I ever saw a chameleon, I thought, how did this tracker spot that chameleon? And it's very different when you got the spotlights in your hand and you're directly behind that beam. It's a lot easier to see the chameleon. And all you, you just have to know what you're looking out for. And then it can be not easy, but it's easier when you know what you are looking for. And about it's our pleasure. Thank you very much once again for sending through your comments. I'm glad you enjoyed this sunset safari. Very enjoyable and unfortunately there was a little bit of rain at Amakala. So they unfortunately have had to head back to camp. But it's been a, a very interesting sunset safari. We've chatted literally all things safari wise so i hope everybody did learn some a thing or two uh, about any of these animals that we saw i think my highlight for the show definitely on my part was those two beautiful giraffes and then also that fantastic sunset that we were able to see and I already look forward to tomorrow morning's sunrise safari. Who knows, maybe we get lucky and come out of the camp and the wild dogs are on quarantine looking for an impala. But it is also going to be good tomorrow morning because we'll be able to see tracks a lot clearer. I mean the rain from this morning has almost made it a clean slate. So we're able to see any tracks of a rain and will then point us in the right direction. We also know that the black dam males were hitting. Uh, 
I'm just gonna just gonna stop right here. You also do know that last night the black dam males were heading in the direction of Juma, so maybe we can find their tracks. It would be amazing to find some lines for all the viewers sitting at home. And once again, thanks very much everybody for sending through your questions and comments and interacting with all the naturalists. It's been a fantastic sunset safari. And I look forward to tomorrow morning to see what we can find out there for you. I hope everybody has a fantastic Wednesday evening further. Whether you're sitting at home with your family, have a great evening. And I'm sure myself and the rest of the Wild Earth team thank you once again for always tuning in. It's been a fantastic evening. Unfortunately, there were no, was no last minute leopard, but hopefully tomorrow morning myself or Cedric has some luck. But anyway, everyone, thanks very much once again. Have a fantastic one. Goodbye.